Well, here we are again. Bob and Carol, Martin and Barbara. Yes, another Wednesday night. How long have we been getting together like this? Must be three years at least. Yeah, and you know, I've been, I've been thinking, you know, every Wednesday night for the last three years, we've been, you know, kind of seeing each other, right? Right. Well, tonight, uh, just for a little, uh, you know, change, instead of, well, instead of Bob and Carol and Martin and Barbara, why can't it be Bob and Barbara, Martin and Carol? <laughs> you mean, <laughs> well, it's okay with me, <laughs> if it's okay with the girls. Well, uh, that's up to Carol. You mean me and Mike? Yeah, yeah you and Mike. <laughs> 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 what do you say, gang? <laughs> huh? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Come on. All right. All right. <laughs> Craft Music Hall presents Bob and Carol and Martin and Barbara. All brought to you by Craft. Craft for good food and good food ideas. Everybody ought to read variety. You gotta read variety if you make your daily bread. As an actor, a singer, a dancer, a clown Variety tells you, variety sells you It's the hardest paper in town Oh, I can't do it, I really can't, I'm just not ready I, I couldn't Listen to me, kid, that's just stage fright Oh no, Mr. Delia, I'm just the understudy I don't know that routine yet Kid, I... I'm doing this for your own good Oh! Get on that stage! Charlie, believe me, I've been trying to find a wax. I just can't find anyone with a new gimmick. Okay, okay, yeah, I'll call you if something interesting turns up. Right. <laughs> hey. Beat it, will ya, will ya? Look, make it fast, I'm no, very no, no. busy. I got the freshest, I got the newest, I got the most original act ever made up in the whole history. Beat it, kid, there ain't no new acts. Watch this one. Da 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 Up with the wheels of the world. You mean the showbiz world? We mean the showbiz world. Like a star is born. Who was his mother? His agent. Who else? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> honey, 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 listen to me. We're supposed to go on tour today. You tell me you're going to quit the act. What is that? Right, look. I don't care if you're the greatest magician in the whole entire world. I'm tired of being your assistant. I want to go back to being just your wife. Yeah, baby, but where am I going to find a replacement for you? Look, I and don't care. Day. That's your problem. Fourteen years of that same stupid act being sawed in half every day. It's enough for anyone. <laughs> okay. Okay, babe. If that's what you want, that's what you get. You really mean it? Yeah, I mean it. Come on, we'll go out and have some dinner, and then we'll go dancing. Song, man, he's got a friend. Not a song, throw 
variety. They call it the Bible of show business. And it's a perfect name for it. Every time an actor reads it, he prays for a job. <laughs> oh, come on, Bob. Now, even if every actor finds it a little rough going in the beginning, it's all worth it when you make it. And yeah. you know it. I, I know. I was only kidding. I'd rather be an actor, a performer, than anything else in the world. But when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a spy. What? Yeah, I was intrigued. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I was intrigued by the by the hair, you know, pulled down and the, and the trench coats and the things that self-destruct. When I was a kid, I, I wanted to be a spy. You never told me you wanted to be a spy. Well, I couldn't, Carol. It was classified information. <laughs> Marty, what would you have done if you hadn't gone into show business? Well, I guess I'd still be a cartoonist. Really? I didn't know you were a cartoonist. Oh, yeah. I did it for years. I worked for a newspaper. I, I loved cartooning. You know, he was great at it. I mean, if he'd had stuck with it, he'd been one of the finest cartoonists in the world today. That's a nice wife talking. <laughs> well, what made you go from being a cartoonist to becoming an actor? I lost my pencil. <laughs> Barbara, if you hadn't gone into, uh, into show business, what would you have done? You want to know the truth? Mm. Well, more than anything else in the whole world, I wanted to be a nurse. And that's all I ever thought of, to dedicate myself to humanity. No matter what hardships I had to endure, no matter what hours I would put in, no matter what sacrifices I had to make, I wanted to be a nurse. Well, why didn't you? I didn't think I looked good in white. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about any of you, but from the very beginning, I always wanted to be in show business. Really? Well, it's the only profession that has no limitations. Why, to this day, I still dream about being able to do Fair Lady or Carousel, Guys and Dolls, or West Side Story. I do. You, you did West Side Story. Well, not the man's part. <laughs> well, seeing as this is the year of liberation, my darling, women's lib, consider yourself liberated. <laughs>
stars of the show. In the show. Well, I think we got a hit in our hands, gang. Yeah. So, darling, darling, I hope this play runs forever so that we can be together always because we love you both. Yes, we, we love, love both of you. Oh, yes, we do. We we do. So darling, you were marvelous oh, tonight. Oh, thank you, my darling. You were unbelievable tonight. Unbelievable. You gave the performance of the century, my love. And Just, you. And, and you. And you. 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> Champagne, compliments to the house to oh. celebrate your opening. Ah, oh, good old oh, Vinny. So nice. <laughs> hello, hello, David. Oh, thank you, thank you. What? You want me for hello, Dolly? <laughs> Not a chance. We're going to stay together because we love each other. That's right. Uh, you bet we love each other. <laughs> hey, Hal, how are you, Hal? How are you doing? Oh, gee, thanks, Al, but no, I can't take any new parts this season. I'm going to be with these three marvelous people in this show for a long time to come, Al. <laughs> right? Right, right. Oh, wow. Oh, Constance, I can't wait another moment. That scene in the first act, you were fantastic. Really? I mean, there hasn't been anything like that That's in the right. theater since Helen Hayes. You created oh. magic on the stage, darling. Magic! Yes. Sheer magic! Look yes. who's talking about magic. You were superb. What Let's you? face oh, it. We were part. all fantastic. We are five of the greatest actors on Broadway. Uh, five, Dwayne. We're, <laughs> we're only four of us. Oh, I know that. But you were so great, I counted you twice. <laughs> you go too far, Dwayne. If you have to count me twice, you have to count this young lady at least four times. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, well. If you're gonna count me four times, then you've got to count this great talent eight times. Eight? <laughs> well, then you certainly have to count him eleven. Would you believe fifteen times? Now look, this is ridiculous. This is ri let's just say we're twenty-five of the best actors that ever lived. Oh. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. The reviews just came in. Oh, oh. Wayne, 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 Wayne. I bet they think we're better than we thought we were. Here eh? it is. Listen yeah. to this. Okay. The square triangle. The new play that opened at the Bijou last night can only be described as the worst play in the history of the theater. <laughs> the worst play in the history of the theater? Did you I certainly did. Wait a minute, that's only one critic's opinions. Where are the other that's reviews? Right. Right. I'm sorry, sir. They told me to only bring you the best review. <laughs> Good night, David. David, I'll call you tomorrow morning about Hello, Dolly. Don't call you about Hello, Dolly. Don't ever call you. You never saw David spit before. <laughs> Good night, Hal. 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 Good night, George. Good night, Gower. <laughs> Good night, Flowers. It's all my fault. Oh, oh yes, it's all my fault. Yes, it is. I've got no one to blame but myself. I had a bad review like this coming to me. It serves me right. It serves me right. It serves me right for agreeing to work with three lousy amateurs like you. Amateurs? Yes, amateurs. Oh, now, wait a minute. You gave the coldest, deadest performance I've ever seen. I gave that That's dead right. I've seen people read fortune cooks with more feeling. I suppose you were great, huh? Are you kidding? I had that audience eating out of my hands. No wonder you were serving ham. All right, I didn't want to tell you this, but right after the show, I was offered to do a big guest shot on a fantastic, important television show. By who? Ted Mack? Well, well at least I got a rave notice. Look at this. Wait, what? Miss Benton made the play. <laughs> it's Miss Benton played the maid. <laughs> I certainly learned my lesson. Before I'd ever work with any of you, I'd rather starve. Well, that would be a very good idea, because then maybe you would fit into your costume. <laughs> You're the ones who are in trouble, not me. I can go to Hollywood tomorrow and have my choice of jobs. Oh, yeah? Which one would you take? Mowing loads or cleaning swimming pools? Uh -huh. I'm getting out of here. But before I go, I want you to know one thing. I wouldn't be caught dead on the stage with any of you. Well, just a moment. You know something with your acting, no one could tell the difference. <laughs> Is that so? I thought you said I created magic no. on that magic. stage. Magic? Yes, you uh -uh. created magic. When you made your entrance, the audience disappeared. <laughs> Yes, that is not funny. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to this last paragraph. Oh. Although last night's play was amateurishly written, 
the superlative performances by its four talented stars will probably keep it running for years. Put this one on your must-see list. <laughs> and I tell you, you were great, baby! <laughs> You know, there's one thing that never changes in show business. No matter how successful you become, when a new part comes along in a Broadway show and you want it, you've still got to audition for it. And it's terrifying because you know there are hundreds of people auditioning for the same part. You know, sometimes there is more emotion and real drama in an audition than anybody ever sees on a Broadway stage. Thank you. Don't call us. We'll call you. Pete. Yeah. Anybody else to audition? Yeah, there's one more out there. All right, send him out. Hello? Anybody out there? What's your name? You are having the pleasure of meeting Harold J. Malfi. The guy who's going to make your play the biggest hit on Broadway. Look, Mr. Malfi, maybe you'd rather come back tomorrow? What's that? What do you mean? What do you mean, tomorrow? What? What do you think? You think just because I, I had a couple of drinks? Is that what you think? That I can't do an audition for you because I had a... Yes, okay. Okay, I had a couple of drinks. In fact, I had I have more than a couple. But what do you care? What do you care? You don't care. What's it to you, right? I mean, why should you care? All you, you have to do, my friend, is sit out there and watch actors fighting, fighting for their lives up here. You know, you, you ought to, you ought to come up here. You ought to come up here, and you ought to try it yourself my friend, and you ought to get the feeling of rejection. Look, pal, why don't you just go home and sleep it off? Sure. Sure, sure. Sure, go home and sleep it off. Should I go home, my friend? Why don't I go home and try to explain to my wife why the... Yes, I'll go home. I'll go home and try to tell her why I've been turned down again. Turned down by some smug and faceless producer who wouldn't know acting talent if he saw it. Mr. Melfi! I'm not going to tell you again. Now, you get your feet out of this theater, I'm going to throw you out. Now, Pete, show him the door. Hold it. That will not be necessary. You see, I'm not really drunk. I realize uh, that you see a lot of people, and I wanted to make an impression. I'm sorry. Uh, you really did. Thank you. <laughs> you had me fooled. Good. Unfortunately, we don't need anybody to play the part of the drunk. Now, didn't your agent tell you what we're, uh, what we're looking for? We just said it was a part of a drunk. Well, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a musical. It's about a brash young entertainer who <laughs> tries to climb up into the world by stepping in everybody's toes. Hey, are you kidding? I can do a part like that with my lips tied behind my back. Pal Joe and Sammy Glick. That's me. See, I am the greatest. The greatest talent in show business. Do you know nobody in the world can play a part the way I can? <laughs> I can... Hold it. My part's already taken. Oh. What do you have open? Well, Mr. Malfi, a big talent like you wouldn't be interested. Just a small part. Part of an old man, the father. Besides, you're too young for it anyway. 
It's all right. Well, if it's really a, really a small part, then uh, I guess that wouldn't interest me. <laughs> I mean, I, my agent, well, anyway, I thought it was a bigger part. And, uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, excuse me. How, how small a part is it? The mouth is just a few lines. How many? Well, it's just a couple. It, it, uh, it leads into a song. A song? Mm. Really? I, I can play an old man. I really can. I really can. I tell you, if, to play an old man, you have to know about the feelings of an old man, the thoughts, the, the dreams of an old man. In other words, what goes through his mind? You know what I'm saying? I mean, when, when he thinks about how he spent his life, for instance, I mean, to play an old man, you've got to got to, well, you've got to create his room, his bed, an overstuffed chair, a handful of memories, good memories and bad ones, but they're mine. It's a long, long way from May to December. But the time... goes fast when you reach September. And the autumn weather to flame <laughs> One hasn't got time for the waiting game And the days dwindle down to a precious few September November November And these few precious days I'll spend with you Precious days I'll spend with That was very good. Very good, Mr. Malfi, but uh, well, you're not you're not quite what we're looking for. I'm sorry. You're really a little too young to play an old man and something comes up. I'll let you know. Thank you anyway. Agnes, would you call my wife? Tell her I'll go home for dinner. Call the steakhouse and make reservations. summer day you might as well take the sun away and the birds that flew in the summer sky when our love was new and our hearts were high when the day was young and the night was long and the moon stood still for the night bird's song if you go away 
If you go away, you go away. But if you stay, I'll make you a day like no day has been or will be again. We'll sail on the sun, we'll ride on the rain, we'll talk to the trees, we'll worship the wind. And if you go, I'll understand. Leave me just enough love to fill up my hand. If you go away, if you go away, if you go away. If you go away, and I know you will, you must tell the world to stop turning till you return again, if you ever do. For what good is love without loving you? Can I tell you now as you turn to go? I'll be dying slowly till that next hello. If you go away, if you go away, if you go away. But if you stay, I'll make you a night like no night has been or will be again. I'll sail on your smile, I'll ride on your touch, I'll talk to your eyes that I love so much. And if you go, go, I won't cry, though the good is gone from the word goodbye. If you go away, if you go away. If you go away, as you know you must, There'll be nothing left in this world to trust. Just an empty room full of empty space like that empty look I see in your face. I'd have been the shadow of your shadow if I thought it might have kept me by your side. If you go away, if you go away, if you go away, please don't go away. Please, don't go away. Marty, what do you tell people who ask you how to get ahead in show business? Well, I usually say study hard, hope for luck, and try and know your craft better than anyone else. That's a good answer. I know somebody who knows his craft better than anybody else in the whole world, Mr. Ed Hurley. Just when I was beginning to trust you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Send down your waters to wash 
the blood from all of the sand let the seeds of freedom awake and flourish let the deep roots Welcome to Open Mouth. My name is David Sussman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tonight our subject is the permissive society. With such a subject, I wanted my guests to be completely different. So I've assembled four of the most unusual guests it's ever been my pleasure to present. Our first guest is a man of international reputation whose lifestyle and insights into the permissive society should prove intriguing to us all. It gives me great pleasure to present Henry VIII. Henry VIII, Prince of Wales, Defender of the Faith, King of England. And a very unhappy hubby. <laughs> yes, sir, but we'll get to all of that in a minute. Our second guest is a lovely lady, an accomplished horsewoman, and a pioneer in street demonstrations, Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva was the wife of Leofric, Earl of Mercia, and Lord of Coventry. With Lady Godiva's ride through the streets of Coventry, originated the story of, uh, I meant originated the story of Peeping Tom, the only man who dared to peep through the closed shutters. My next guest... I don't. No, no, we, we don't relate to the others. Okay. Our third guest relate, is one of the relate. great romantic heroines of all time, Cleopatra. She was the queen of Egypt, married at 17, as was the family custom to her younger brother. Yeah, it was rotten when they forced me to marry my younger brother, especially since I was in love with someone else at the time. <laughs> my older brother. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get the, we'll get to the clinic. Oh, yeah, just ah. oh, oh, wait a minute. Our final guest is a fascinating Russian personage, an early practitioner of hypnotism, Rasputin. <laughs> Rasputin was a uh, notorious figure at the court of Nicholas II, the last czar of Russia. He was a semi-illiterate faith healer and a quantum seducer. All the ladies in the audience will come to my room. In the case of the pretty ladies, I'll come to your room. <laughs> no, no, please, we, we don't. We don't we, we're not allowed to be in television. Now, I'd like to carry on now and start the proceedings with Your Majesty. You were... You're drooling a little bit. You, you are a much married man. What's your reaction to the modern loose sexual morality? Shocking, Mr. Suskind. Kind. Uh, so, uh, shocking, Mr. Kind. <laughs> You see, with all deference, Your Majesty, how could you take such a high moral position when you yourself were married six times? Well, it's very simple, you see. I loved each one of my wives. Right up to the beheadings, I loved them. One I even liked better after a beheading. Always thought she was too tall. <laughs> Another, excuse me, could we not get off on little byways here? Another aspect of today's permissive society is nudity, Lady Godiva. Please be careful. You, you seem to be the logical person to comment on nudity. Well, I don't know why I should be the logical person to comment on nudity. I mean, you make one naked horseback ride and they never let you forget it. <laughs> they never mention yes, well, that was I was a, a good housekeeper and a loving wife. <laughs> Your Majesty, don't peep. Your, uh, Your Majesty, don't look at anything. I'm sorry for bringing up such a painful subject. I know it obviously evokes very painful memories. That's why I didn't mention it earlier. Oh, I see. Well, I think you should ask me about my naked ride through the streets of Coventry, don't you? No, please don't say naked on television. Could you say without clothing? Naked. Or sans naked, clothing. Naked, no, naked, no, naked, no, no, naked. no, not naked. No, naked. no, no, no. Well, you see, I am. No, you're not naked. No, no. She's naked. <laughs> Thank you. Get me salt. The reason, no, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I didn't want to ask you about it because I thought you were probably ashamed about your naked horseback ride. 
Well, I see no reason to be ashamed about it. First of all, <laughs> I've got the best naked body in all of Coven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when peeping Tom peeped, he really got a peepful, mm. didn't he? <laughs> I, I'm sure did. I'm sure did. I'd like to ask uh, Cleopatra. Wait question. a minute. Wait a minute. What I'm about me, the mad monk? Nobody asked me nothing. Yeah, I'm coming. No wonder I'm mad. I, I, if you just give me a minute. Wouldn't you be mad? I'd be mad. Sure. I'm not mad anymore. You're pretty cute. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I feel hotsy totsy. <laughs> Well, you Please. shut up! Don't interrupt. I'm the moderator. Well, no, I still got this, you know that. Sure, that's why I got the whole Russian family. Rescue. With this and the fact that I was a very good kisser. <laughs> I was never a nice person, but I was always a very swell kisser. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back with you in a minute, Rescue. Just let me. Cleopatra. Yes. I, I'm very fascinated about your relationship with Julius Caesar. Yeah, that's what really fascinated me about me, too, is my relationship with Julius Caesar. <laughs> Actually, I was a very lucky girl. Well, you gotta remember, Julie was a Roman emperor. I was just a kid from the wrong side of the Nile. <laughs> yeah, but you meant well. Uh, Cleopatra, you, you were in love with Julius Caesar. Oh, he, yes. He, he was a much older man. Much older. Older man? Yes. You like older men? <laughs> yes, I do. Hey, how about one with hypnotic powers and a room in the palace? <laughs> <laughs> Caesar was assassinated, you must have been devastated with grief. Oh, yes. For hours. I, I presume your, your grief over Caesar's death was uh, alleviated by your meeting with Mark Antony. I, I, if my notes are correct, you were married in uh, 36 B.C. That's right. We were going to be married in 37 B.C., but you had to wait for those blood tests. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Rasputin, I finally have a question for you. Of course you have a question for me. I have you in my power. No, no. I have respect for you, but I'm certainly not in your power. So what? I don't even want you in my power. Who wants a gray-haired, middle-aged man in my power when I am sitting knee to knee with a cute little glints like this? Uh, is there much speed crime in Russia in those days? Hey, tell you the truth. In Russia, the snow in the streets was higher than a man's head. So how do I know what was going on under that snow? <laughs> Maybe sometimes I'd hear a voice under the snow saying, Hey there! A scream, a shot under the snow. Someone say, Hey, they're stealing my sled! But I wouldn't testify. I didn't want to get involved with everything going on and under all that snow. You know what I mean? Right. Thank you, Rasputin. That was very, very illuminating. Henry, Henry Day, Your Majesty, as a man who's had many marital difficulties, I want to ask you this. Uh, as opposed to uh, your, the old method of beheading your wives, would you now seek the help of a marriage counselor? Gladly. I would have legally gone with any one of my wives to seek advice for a marriage counselor instead of beheading them. But, but what if after gaining some uh, understanding of your problems, were you still dissatisfied with your wives? What would you do then? Well, it's obvious I would have... Uh, I would have beheaded them with a little more understanding. <laughs> and, and more than that, there would have been a lot of marriage counselors walking around London wearing a bow tie for an at. <laughs> you mean, uh... I mean, uh, you understand that, eh, you old middle-aged, white-haired voyeur? <laughs> the real reason... The historical that legend. ...that I beheaded me first wife was because it was the only way I could get her to stop calling me Hank. <laughs> Killing a woman. Any reason is a good reason for killing a woman. Any reason is a good reason for killing anybody. No, 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 A birthday greetings, bottles of wine. Doing the garden, digging the weeds. Who could ask for more? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? 
Did you ever think what it's really going to be like when we're 64? Oh, dear. Well, the kids will all be grown. They'll probably have children of their own by then. You know, if you think there's a generation gap now, imagine what it's going to be like trying to explain to our grandchildren what 1970 was all about. Oh, mm, I don't think it'll be so difficult. You know, all they'll have to do is listen to the lyrics of the songs written today, and they'll know what was happening. Welcome to the sulfur dioxide. Hello, carbon monoxide. The air, the air is everywhere. Breathe deep while you sleep. Breathe deep. Bless you. Alcohol bloodstream. Save me. Nicotine bloodstream. Breathe deep, and if you can sleep, breathe deep, 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 deep. <laughs> oh, the games people play now, every night and every day now, never meaning what they say now, never saying what they mean. And they wallow away the hours in their ivory tower. What's happening to you and me? God grant me the serenity to remember who I am. I'm giving up a sanity for a pride and a vanity. Turn their backs on humanity. Oh, the games people play. Where do I go? Follow the river Where do I go? Follow the gun Where is the something? Where is the someone That tells me why we live and die? Follow the wind song Follow the thunder Follow the neon in young lovers' eyes down to the gutter, or up to the glitter, into the city where the truth lies. Where do I go? Follow my heartbeat. Where do I go? Follow my hand. Where will they lead me? And will I ever discover why we live in love? Anybody here seen my old friend Abraham? Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people. It seems they could die young. I just looked around and he was gone. Is anybody here? See my old friend Martin. Can you tell me where he's gone? He did a lot for freedom, but it seems the good die young. Cause I just turned my head and he was gone. Didn't we love the things we stood for? Didn't they try to find some good for you and me? Has anybody here seen my old friend Bobby? Can you tell me where he's gone? I thought I saw him walking up over the hill with Abraham Martin and John. Hello, Doc.
darkness, my old friend Come to talk to you again Cause a vision softly creeping Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains Within the sound of silence In the naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more People talking without speaking People hearing without listening People writing songs that voices never share But no one dare disturb the sound of silence That's our show for tonight. We want to thank David Sustein for his always stimulating presence and contribution. Don't forget to watch next week when Kraft Music Hall presents television's hit parade of comedy. 
with the three guys who started it all, Milton Berle and his guests, Sid Caesar and Phil Silvers. Good night, Carol. Good night, Barbara. Good night, Bob. Good night, everybody. Kraft Music Hall has been brought to you by Kraft. Kraft for good food and good food ideas. Kraft, a division of Kraft Co. Corporation. To get tonight's recipes free, by Kraft October TV Recipes. Box 1718, Chicago 6069. A postcard will do. This is Ed Hurley.